Hey, hi everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Vishal and this is going to be our part 16 of Snowflake Zero to Hero series. In this video, we are going to take a deep dive into the snow pipe. Now, consider one scenario where your manager is saying that, hey, I am putting some file into the cloud bucket. It can be S3, it can be Azure or it can be GCS. But the problem is that I can put 10 files, 20 files, 30 files after one hour, two or three hours and you do not need to uh, perform this manual execution or basically saying that as soon as I'm putting the file into this bucket area, those should be ingested into the snowflake. Now, you cannot do this manually all the time because Every time when your manager is putting the files, he's going to text you and then you will be like uh, replying, yes, sir, I'm going, I'm on it, I'm working on it. And then you are going to run the copy into command. But this is definitely not a feasible option for you or for anyone. For this, we have Snowpipe. Snowpipe is used for continuous serverless loading of data into the Snowflake target table. So what it does, it enabling, it enables loading data uh, lo no, data files as soon as they are available into the stage. So I'm putting into the stage and then uh, the snow pipe is going to get the message from the cloud side. We are uh, and obviously we are going to configure each step how it is going to notify it by the AWS that yes, there is one event or there is one action. So snow pipe is going to receive that message and then going to insert the data. But before diving into this, make sure you are going to complete the part 14th because in this, I'm going to use AWS Cloud. We have already configured the storage integration external stages. So let me take you to my Snowflake window. I hope you remember. So in this case, what we have uh, done, we created an AWS customer load tables and using this file format in this data, we have performed this uh, like external stages and the storage integration was S3 end. So if I check this list S3 stays, there should be one file. And that is a customer data. Now, if I can just perform it, there should be some the data should. Yeah, so we do have some records. It's just having a 10 records over here. So let's let's uh, do this from uh, like uh, this next step that how we are going to configure it. That means if my manager or if anyone, if client is uploading a file into the snow, into the AWS S3 bucket, so then without running this manual copy into command, how we can insert the data. Okay, so for that, the first thing you need to create a snow pipe. Okay, so let's consider one scenario. I'm going to have some files here. Okay, and let's start. Uh, let's do that with this from the basic. This is my customer data now. And I'm going to make few changes here. So this run by is Vishal. I'm going to take all the data here. And uh, then we have some, let's say this phone number is fine. Address is Noida. Let's say it's a daily. And let's take some ID. It's going to be started from 999. Or let me just take from 990. Okay, so we have, I'm just not going to change the names and the phone number. And the joining date is going to be today's date, which is 7 1. And this phone number is also going to be something like that. Okay, so I'm saving it and I'm saving this one as a new file. This is save as then the snowflake training only and this customer data file. My file is saved. Now as a next step, I'll go to my AWS and just to verify with whether which bucket it was, you can simply check it in your URL that this was a YouTube learning snowflake bucket. So I'll go over here. I have this YouTube learning snowflake bucket. With that, let me just uh, close 
everything. <coughs> now in the source folder, I'm going to upload this file. You can simply click on upload. And this, I guess you can do that. And this customer data file, I'm going to open that. And I'm going to upload it. Now, I have uploaded the files, but until unless I do not run this copy into command, then this file will not be copied. So if I'm going to do this copy into AWS load from S3 stays, and you see here, this file got 10 record got loaded. And if I need to check the data, then I can see this latest data is also available. Yep. But I did a manually. Now I do not want it to run it manually. So um, I need to create a snow pipe. And again, like if you need this PPD, you can just simply drop a message to me. This is going to have all the same steps, just like we have performed already to connect your AWS with the snowflake till the storage integration, the file format stages, everything we're going to create, except this one here, we need to create a pipe. And in that we need to wrap that copy into statement. Okay. So I'll come over here. I need to write create pipe. And that is, I'm just considering it the AWS pipe. And here you need to write auto ingest equal to true. Then as, and after that, you are going to write your copy into statement. And I'm going to use the same copy into statement. I'm going to use the same copy into statement. I need to copy that. And then that's it. Now, if I run it, my pipe is successfully created. But now imagine that you want to send the message to your crush. You do not have her email address, her phone number. How would you send? Right? You need mobile number or you need email address. Then only you can convey your feelings or you can convey your message to her. In simple thing, we have created a pipe who is going to load the data into this table from the stays. But how the stays is going to notify Snowflake that, hey, I do have some actions or I do have some messages for you. For that, we need to actually perform this event here. We need to do this event configuration here. So you will come into this YouTube learning Snowflake uh, bucket. Now you need to come into the properties. Into the properties, when you scroll down, scroll down, there is one you have event notification. So I need to do this event notification. That means whenever there is any a create event, whenever we are uploading any file, that should immediately send a notification to Snowflake and Snowflake should come in the action that yes, there is some change into the metadata and I need to perform something. I need to ingest something. Now, before that, I need the describe, oh, oh sorry, I, I will be running the show pipes. When I run the show pipe, this is the AWS pipe we have created. If you go scroll, like if you're going to scroll to the right, we have this notification channel. This notification channel is nothing but your crush mobile number. Okay. Or imagine that if one company want to send your broadcast message, he will be adding you into the broadcast group. But before that, he needs your email or your phone number. And he is going to add into the list. So whenever there is any message or they are uploading any document, you will easily get notified. Okay. So I'm going to copy this notification channel. Now I'll come back to error not like event notification. I'm going to click on create event notification. Now you can say snow pipe alert. You can name it anything, whatever you want. I'm not going to touch any other properties and event type should be all object create events. Okay, right now we are focused only when we are any uh, events is created. So I just checked it. Now scroll down, scroll down and you need to choose the destination. Because any event is occurring at S3, so that is source. But where exactly this needs to send the notification, the destination means your crush mobile number you need to write, right? So the destination should be Lambda function SNS or SQS. 
if you will look at this one here what is this sqs so you're going to click on this sqs queue and choose from your sqs queue whether you have created your sqs queue in the aws account no this is something which we are going to update from like update manually because we have we are going to get it from the snowflake so i'm going to copy this one going to enter this and click on save changes now everything has been configured okay we haven't configured the storage indication in external stages that for that you can uh, watch part four, uh, 14 okay but for this we have configured only the event notification now if i'm going to upload any new files and this will automatically get loaded let's see that so i do i have this customer data file what i'm gonna do is run by megan fox i'm up to updating this and here this id is going to be 1001 all right and this is i'm going to start from 35 37 okay and this phone number is going to be 777 for everyone I hope this is going to give you an, uh, uh, enough idea whether this data got ingested or not. So I'm going to save it. Okay. I'm um, going to save this one. No, so, sorry. Let me save it as a by a different name. So there should not be any confusion. Customer data file 2. I'm going to save it. And now what I'm going to do before that let's see the count select count star from aws customer load we have 20 okay also hmm, yeah also we wanted to check the status of it so select system pipe status Now look at this one. Currently, we have not uploaded any new file, or it did not get any no, no, like uh, messages. You can see the pending file count is zero. Number of outstanding messages on channel is one. Last received message is this one. Last pulled from channel timestamp is this. So this is you are getting some basic details. But look at this. There is no pending file count. Execution status is running okay last received message timestamp is this one you just focus on that this one is last message last received message right the timing is 13 31 45 now i'm going to do this one i'm going to upload it so i'll go into the objects i'm going to upload this file files this is customer data file 2 and open that my file got uploaded so come here and let's see the count okay count is still 20 why because it is going to take some time it's not just going to do immediately it will be doing it will be performing this action within the minute but before that let me just check the status of this pipe now look at one thing uh, this pending file count zero okay last received message still uh, like uh, there is no change into the last received messages okay look at this one now this last forwarded file path it has been added customer data file to okay and if you will look at this one last received message timestamp it changed to 13 35 00 earlier it was 13 31 and it is now 13 35 so that has been updated and now let me just check the count and count is 30 so to verify whether the data has been populated or not you're going to simply write select start from aws customer load and then here we just need to check in the run by there should be some megan fox all right so that's how you can continuously load the data from aws to the snowflake
Now, okay. So one more thing, like if you really wanted to know about the, your pi, uh, your pipe uh, status, uh, whether it got successfully executed or not, and second, how much credit consumption happened in your uh, this pipe load, or you just wanted to know for your entire pipe, and uh, you can definitely change the parameter. So you have to use these two things. One is the copy history. That is basically you need to wait for a couple of hours because this is an account user schema and we have some latency. So for this, you can run this um, your Snowflake account users copy history. That is the view. For that, you should have some access of uh, access uh, as well. Um, like uh, for account admin can definitely uh, access all the views inside this account user schema. So if I'm going to run it, I may not be able to get some data. The reason because it would be having some latency and this account, all the views under the account user schema, they have a latency from 45 to 180, uh, 45 to 180 minutes. So probably like if I'm going to run it after two hours, like uh, yeah, one hour or two hours, this should have a data. Okay. In the same, like uh, the similarly, you can even check into this, uh, you're going into the UI, run into the copy history. And in this copy history, this is the last seven days. You can just select the, some pipe also. Yeah, again, you can see this data up to 45 minute latency. Here you can see this custom file 25 minute ago that was, this was uh, loaded and the status was loaded. So that means there is no error. Uh, but yes, if you have multiple pipes and you wanted to uh, check the history and, uh, and everything, you can simply go into the copy history view. Now, the, mm, the next question is that how would I be able to get my the credit consumption? For that also, we will be using another view and that is pipe users history. So this is not the view, basically it's a table function. So here you can use the information schema, pipe users history, and there you can perform the state range start or end date if you really wanted to know from that particular time. And this pipe name is going to be, I'm going to give my particular pipe. I'm going to run this enter and you will see that yeah, for this particular pipe, we have spent these many credits. Consider one scenario that I am going to upload one file, which is not exactly, not um, having a same structure as of this table. Or what if there are some data type error or some data issues, what will, uh, how we are going to get notified in this scenario? For that, you just need to go and check into your snow pipe history, which is going to take time. You will be checking into the information schema that we have. So you can just change, uh, check into your pipe history. And in the pipe history, you will be like getting it, whether it is a success rate or a fail. Right. But this is something you're going to do manually. So in this case, what we have to do, we have to configure this error indication. So as soon as there would be any error or like uh, when uh, the snowflake snow pipe is going to insert some data into the snowflake, but it failed due to some truncation error, data type error, or maybe some kind of a, um, some column count mismatch or anything it can be, then it is going to drop you an email. But how we are going to configure that, we will be looking into our next video. I hope you have enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and please share with your friends.